uh, we move now actually back to Damascus, where we are very much pleased to be uh, having our next speaker, uh, architect Maria Saade, uh, who was in fact a member of the Syrian parliament. I can see that Maria is with us. I hope that you can hear us, uh, Maria. And if you can, so please, yes. the floor and the screen is yours. Welcome. Okay. Thank you so much to give me this opportunity to talk about uh, sanctions and uh, the impacts uh, of, the, of those sanctions on reconstruction and the COVID-19 pandemic uh, stage. So during 10 years in Syria, these unilateral coercive measures that violate all international charters and laws have been an obstacle not only to the public sector of the state or blocking the governmental mechanism, but targeting the development of the whole society and now attacking the decent livelihood and the right of life of Syrians. This kind of war started from the beginning by the so-called economical sanctions through blocking all kinds of dealing with Syria, diplomatic and international relations, finance and banking relations, transportations, in addition to blocking all account of some private sectors that generate the main economy in Syria. At the same time, this war continued through the proxy war with the with the collaboration of the terrorist groups by attacking the factories, dismantling the industrial equipment and trafficking of these factories, the oil and the archaeological pieces illegally to Turkey and then to Europe. Then when Syria won in the military war and take back the control in 2018 of the majority of the areas that was under domination of terrorists, including Aleppo and the rural of Damascus, the reconstruction stage tried to start by the force and the will of the Syrians, despite all obstacles. With our modest capacities and resources, we started to work hard to get back life to normal in Syria again. As an architect, I started working with many investors, not only as an architectural and engineering company, but also as a specialized in project development and concept. So I was feeling the real will of the Syrians inside and outside the country to regain life and the economy, in addition to the desire or of the desire of many foreign companies from all sides that they visited Syria and started negotiate founding their businesses there. So we worked hard, especially till 2019. Then Caesar Act appeared to punish Syrians and kill the will and the desire even. Caesar Act came to say that you don't have the right to work. The blockage of the Lebanese banking account came to complete the scene and the explosion of the port attack the will and all facilities to continue with our hope. New businessmen and investors have been punished too by freezing their accounts therapy blocking the economy, the basis of the development, and stopping many projects that operate the workforces. Unfortunately, unemployment reached more than 58% of the population, while before the war it was less than 8%. All segments of the population have been punished with 90% below the poverty line. Burning wheat fields in the northeast and olive groves in the coast side, then killing thousands of livestock, was the last message to say you don't have the right to leave, not only to work. Coming to COVID-19 stage, yes, today we are all equal at right but we don't have equal capacities in facing this epidemic 
neither are we able to arm ourselves with the necessary medical defense due to this economic war that has been an obstacle not only to the development of the health and hospital sectors, but to ensure the new medical equipment, not to mention destroyed hundreds of hospitals by terrorist organization. Poverty as well is making it difficult to apply the quarantine to contain the virus and apply the necessary treatments. That is precisely the case in Syria today. It is an economic terrorism launched by state establishing themselves as a judge of nations and calling the war for democracy and human rights. It's the war of starving people and destructing society under the so-called economic sanctions. It's a crime against humanity. Now, the world call for humanitarian help and do every year their job with making reports and publishing indicators. But let me correct the needs of Syrians and the need of all decent societies. We don't need humanitarian help. We need our decent life. We need to start working, to start reconstruction, to get back to our normal life again. It's not correct to beg the aggressor to retract his assault and lifting the so-called economical sanctions. I refuse to sign any petition or even letter to ask Mr. Biden or the US lifting the embargo. Because we all believe that we are equal in humanity, we all have the right to life. We all have the right to a decent life. We all have the right to choose our destiny. So let's stand, I think, together with solidarity and the fact of all that hinders every human being's right to have a free and decent life and put an end to the so-called sanctions. Let's correct the concept of humanity and bring down this system of sanctions, which no longer sweets the dignity of human, not even the humanity that we all deserve. Thank you.